Example 2. Find the exact value of each of the remaining five trigonometric functions of the acute angle theta. So in these problems, we're given one of the trig functions. So we're basically given the ratio of two sides of that right triangle. So then we really have two sides of the three, and we can use Pythagorean theorem to determine the third, which will allow us to get all the five trig functions. So the easiest thing is to draw a picture. So just draw a picture of any generic right triangle. So we know if we're given cosine, and here we can write up here SOHCAHTOA to remind ourselves, so we remember that cosine is the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse. So on our picture here, if I label theta here, it doesn't matter where you label it, which of the two acute angles, it doesn't matter. So we put the theta on there. So then the adjacent side would be radical 2, and the hypotenuse would be 2. So then we just need to solve for that third side, and once we have all three sides, we can find all of those trig functions. So we'll use Pythagorean theorem x squared plus radical 2 squared equals 2 squared. So if we square square root, it just, whoops, if we square square root, it just takes off the radical. So we've got x squared plus 2 equals 2 squared, which is 4. So we subtract the 2, then we have x squared equals 2. And if we do square root of both sides, we're going to get the square root of 2, because we know we can't have a negative value because it's the length of the side of a triangle. So here's our third side radical 2. So now we have all three sides and we can find the remaining trig functions. And even without that remaining side, that third side, if I do the reciprocal of cosine, I can directly find secant because we know that's the reciprocal. So I'll do that one first. So secant of theta is going to be the reciprocal of radical 2 over 2, so it'll be 2 over radical 2. But then we need to rationalize the denominator. We don't leave the radicals in the denominator. So if we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2, that'll give us 2 radical 2 over 2, which will remove the square root from the denominator. And then those 2's divide out, and we're just left with the square root of 2. Okay, so we've got cosine, we've got secant. I'll just use my SOHCAHTOA here, so I'll do sine next. So sine of theta is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. So in this case, that'll be the square root of 2 over 2. And then I can, right from there, get the reciprocal of sine, which is cosecant. So the reciprocal of radical 2 over 2 is 2 over radical 2. And if you see, we just did that above here. And once again, if we rationalize like we did here, times radical 2 over 2. We're once again going to be left with the square root of 2. So we've got cosine secant, sine cosecant. Now we just need tangent and cotangent. So tangent is the re ratio of the opposite to the adjacent side. So on my picture here, I see the opposite is radical 2, and the adjacent is also radical 2. So radical 2 over radical 2 will just give us 1. And then cotangent, we know that's just the reciprocal of tangent, so the reciprocal of 1 is just 1. So when you're given one of the five trig functions, or one of the six trig functions, it's really giving you the ratio of two sides, so you can sketch a picture and sketch two of the sides, and then use Pythagorean theorem to find the third. And then once you have all three sides, we can just use our trig ratios that we know, our SOHCAHTOA, to find these three, and then do their reciprocals to get the remaining three trig functions.